So, Mr. Pratap, uh, you're coming back to IIT Madras after a gap of about 20 years. Yes. How does it feel? Very, very, very different. Okay. Um, like everything is different in IIT Madras now. So, uh, I wish I had more time to wander around right. uh, and examine the campus a little bit more, but I don't, and I regret it. I should have planned my trip better. Maybe the next time I'll spend more time on the campus. Right? So everything is very different, much greener. Uh, you know, so it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. What's a special memory that uh, you know? The moment someone says IIT Madras, what comes to your mind? I mean, there's so many things about IIT Madras that come to mind, right? I mean, it's a, it's it's almost like a, a religious experience that you go through for four years. You know, the the movies in open air theater, you know, the talks that you listen in CLT. Uh, I don't even know whether CLT still is there or not, but, you know, it, there used to be a CLT. Um, and all the walks that we do between campuses, um, between, you know, the humanities and sciences block and the mechanical blocks and stuff like that. And, of course, I'll never forget filing. Um, that was uh, an incredible journey, to say the least. So. Okay, so so we have the CLTs very much there, and we've I think shaped it up a lot better also over mm -hmm. the years. So just for your reference, um, any message that you would like to share to the students of IIT Madras in this day and age, yeah. right? When pressures are also a lot more, and yeah, no, no, they're coming no. under a lot of stress. Yeah. What would be your words of wisdom to them? Yeah, I mean, I really encourage everyone to realize. Um, that they are here in IIT simply because they're special. Um, and the beauty is they don't know that. They don't know why they're special. They don't even know that they are special. And only time will allow them to discover their speciality. And the beauty is everyone recognizes that. Everyone eventually figures it out. Um, very few people you know, go through life without figuring it out. I know a few cases like that who still haven't figured out what they're special about, but most people have and do figure it out. And you shouldn't rush it. In the four years, if you don't figure out what the speciality is, it's not the end of the world. Don't think that you are unspecial because of that. You know, you just have to give it more time and then you will figure out what your speciality is. And there is absolutely no reason for one person to be similar to another they are special in their own ways and that's the critical aspect you don't have to be as good in math as somebody else or as good in computer science as somebody else or good in physics as somebody else you are you and that's why you are here right and the other advice i'd like to give people is that iit the four years of iit you know is almost designed to have you cohabit with people who are about as intelligent as you are, you know, in the same quantum level, oftentimes. Once you leave IIT, you will find that that is absolutely not the case. Um, and it's far easier at that point in time to discover what's special about you. The moment you step outside IIT, it actually becomes more obvious what you're special at. Because the um, you will be almost by design dealing with people who are... Um, not as competitive or not as, um, you know, uh, driven as the people in IIT are. And that gives you the opportunity to kind of breathe a little bit, scope out your, your own talents a little bit better. And, and so you should, you should not rush through things, you know. I mean, I've heard about the five um, suicides in the recent past or four. I don't know how much it is, but I think that's a shame, really a shame. I don't know what the reasons behind that are. But I want to tell everybody, you know, that, that you're all special. So don't give up too soon. Thank you for that. Moving on to the project, can you tell us how the new digital center and the Shakti microprocessor will contribute to nation building? I don't know about nation building. That's a very big problem. Um, I'm simply looking at it as a way to allow for a large number of innovation to to just blossom with very little overhead 
you know, it takes a lot of time to build something new. And if you have to go build every little piece by yourself in order to build that finished product, it can take for, uh, forever and could be very expensive also. That in and of itself curtails innovation. Um, but if a group of people could get together and build the set of building blocks uh, and make it open source, keep it license free, and let everyone use it for free, then that's at least one thing that the innovators don't need to worry about. You know, um, and I think what I wanted to see happen in hardware was what um, you know happened in software 25 years ago with Linux and the GNU compilers and you know Emacs and things like that, Free Software Foundation and so on, where people just would you know a compiler is a very complicated piece of software. And new compilers came and did a pretty good job. It's not the best compiler in the world, but it did a pretty good job. It was good enough for you to kind of move on to other more complicated problems. I think that's what I'm looking for with hardware. It'll be it'll be very interesting five, six, seven years down the road if people could actually build their own hardware systems, but not have to worry about the things that the Shakti team worries about, right? and just builds on top of it. So. Uh in our experience, we've seen that there are a lot of causes that uh, people resonate with, and it's easier for people to invest smaller amounts of money or you know their time into it. What was a thought process for you that made you invest so much of who you are, right, your time and your resources into this current initiative that we've inaugurated today? How did you choose this, and how what compelled you to take this up as opposed to so many other causes that you could have supported out there? Yeah, I mean. In all transparency, I did look at multiple different venues to um, to invest. And for me, what was important was to not just write a check and have someone process it and it goes somewhere and hopefully it makes impact, right? And I wanted to be a little bit part of the journey, but at the same time, I didn't want to be so deep into it that I've, I'm perceived as a micromanagement kind of a thing that's not what that was not my intention but I wanted to be sufficiently part of it so that I uh, could at least shape the the future of the project a little bit uh, influence people with my ideas and so because of that requirement I couldn't for instance invest in uh, areas that I'm unfamiliar with um, I couldn't give the money to say a nuclear research organization or a wind turbine research organization because those are things that I couldn't potentially even begin to get involved in. I'm, I'm not a, an expert in any of those areas, right? So, mm -hmm. so I, I, I was sort of, in a way, f forced into investing in something that I was familiar with, which is computer science. Right. In computer science, this open source thing was a, a bit of a passion of mine. I wanted to introduce open source to hardware, and I felt Risk Five today is where Linux was about 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And I wanted to see RISC-V go down the same journey that Linux went through over the last two decades and kind of, but much faster, right, right an accelerated journey. Right. And so that's um, what brought me to this, this, this particular opportunity. And then, you know, working with Dr. Kamakoti was, a, was, was really a pleasure and the whole team was very cooperative, you know. Um, I was, I really enjoyed listening to their pitches, their descriptions of their projects and you know, I spent time talking to them about it and so on. It was a, overall a very enjoyable experience, yeah. Wonderful. 